Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at Henry Mintzberg's managerial roles. Now, as a manager, you wear many different hats. In a single day, you might have to motivate your team. You might have to give a presentation to the board. You might need to negotiate with a supplier and you might need to analyze data or resolve a conflict between two team members. Now, in fact, you might have to do five tasks that are completely different to these. So as you can see, your days are very diverse and hectic. So now suppose that you wanted to train one of your team members to be a manager just like you. How would you describe what it is that you actually do? Well, before Mintzberg's managerial roles, theories describing the tasks performed by managers tended to be theoretical and vague. So for example, Henry Fayol's five functions of management model that you can see here described a manager's role as planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, and controlling. Now, Mintzberg thought that this was too vague and theoretical. So instead of theorizing about what managers should do, he studied what managers actually do during their working days. And from these studies, he noticed that managers don't spend their time planning and organizing in an orderly fashion. Instead, most managers lead hectic lives where they jump between entirely different problems and tasks multiple times per day. Managers must be a combination of proactive yet reactive, along with controlling yet flexible. Now, these studies led Mintzberg to identify 10 major roles that managers perform, and they are figurehead, leader, liaison, monitor, disseminator, spokesperson, entrepreneur, disturbance handler, resource allocator, and negotiator. And as you can see, they are organized into three broad categories. So first, interpersonal roles concern how you interact with others. Informational roles involve collecting and transmitting information. And finally, decisional roles involve how you make your decisions. So let's take a deeper look at each of the roles. So first, let's look at the three interpersonal roles which concern your relationships with others. So first we have figurehead. So as a manager, you're a figurehead because of your formal authority as head of your team. And with this, you're responsible for performing ceremonial duties. So for example, maybe you take a customer out to lunch, maybe you attend an employee's wedding, and maybe you give an award to an employee. Next, we have the leader role. So as a manager, you're responsible and accountable for your team's work and you must lead your team to perform great work. So this role involves both leading and managing your team. So some examples, maybe you coach a member of your team, maybe you give some encouragement to your team, you give someone feedback, you define a team member's responsibilities, or maybe you delegate a task. So the final interpersonal role is liaison. And as a manager, you have to connect your team to others outside of the vertical chain of command on behalf of your organization. So this can mean working with both internal and external contexts. So some examples may be working with a customer, meeting with a supplier, or working with a recruitment specialist. Next, we move on to informational roles. So the roles within this category concern how you collect and share information. And the first one we're looking at is monitor. So you need to monitor the work of your team. You also need to monitor what's going on elsewhere in your organization. So you must identify which information is important and which is not. And note that this information doesn't have to be factual. You can also monitor gossip and speculation. That's valuable too. So some examples. Maybe you have a conversation with a member of your network. Maybe you do some online research and maybe you read your company's reports. So once you've collected valuable information, you're now in a position to disseminate it, which is the next role. So you act as a disseminator whenever you communicate information in either written or verbal format. So some examples, maybe you share your annual plan with your team. Maybe you inform your team of how you will restructure it to implement your organization's new strategy. So the final informational role is spokesperson. You act as a spokesperson whenever you share information outside of your team. Now, again, that can be written or verbal. And some examples include maybe you give a media interview, maybe you share your organization's plans with the supplier, or maybe you speak at a conference. So finally, we move on to the decisional roles. And the roles within this category concern how you as a manager make decisions. 
and Mintzberg himself regarded these roles as the most important for any manager. So the first decisional role we're going to look at is entrepreneur. You have to develop new and innovative ways to improve your organization's products, services and processes as a manager. You also have to react to changing circumstances and market conditions quickly and spot any opportunities that arise and act on them. So some examples, maybe you identify an opportunity to improve a process. Maybe you identify an opportunity to cut costs. Finally, maybe you solve some long running problem. The next decisional role is disturbance handler. You act as a disturbance handler whenever you react to problems, issues, conflicts, disputes, or any roadblocks that occur. These disturbances or crises or mini crises could be external or internal to your team. So some examples, maybe you mediate a disagreement between two of your team members. Maybe you quickly help your team switch to remote working during a pandemic, for example. Next, we have resource allocator. Being a resource allocator means that you have to decide where to allocate your people and your budget. This will involve planning, scheduling and budgeting. So some examples, maybe you decide to allocate 70% of your budget to short term projects and 30% to long term projects. Or maybe you manage a startup and decide to commit 90% of your team to research and development and just 10% to operations. So the final role and the final decisional role is negotiator. You act as a negotiator whenever you engage in a negotiation. Now that could be with customers, suppliers or new hires. So some examples, maybe you negotiate the salary of a newly hired team member or maybe you negotiate a contract with a supplier. So there are many situations when you might want to use Mintzberg's managerial roles including when you want to write a job description to help you hire a manager, develop comprehensive training for members of your team looking to become managers, or when you want to assess your own weaknesses as a manager and create a plan to address those weaknesses. So how do you actually use Mintzberg's managerial roles? Well, you can use it when you're looking to assess and develop the managerial competence of yourself or others. Now to help with this task, we've produced this template you can use and you can download it by following the link below this video to our companion article. Now to use the template to assess your management skills, first you score yourself out of 10 for each management role. The next thing to do is to set what your target score for each management role should be out of 10. Now note that not every role will need a target score of 10. So for example, suppose you're managing a small team, but you don't have line management responsibility for them and you don't tend to work with others outside of the team. Well, in that case, you don't need to target a 10 for your negotiation skills. Perhaps a three would suffice. So once you've identified the areas you need to improve, the final step is to create yourself a plan to improve each of these areas over time. Now, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with Mintzberg's managerial roles. In terms of advantages, then the roles were developed by observing what managers actually do rather than thinking about what managers should do. It allows you to assess current capability and create a plan to improve. In terms of disadvantages, then what managers actually do isn't necessarily what managers should be doing. Also, there's an overlap between some of the roles. So for example, liaison and spokesperson are very similar. And finally, the model provides no instruction on how to improve your skills for any of the roles. That is completely up to you. So in summary, when developing Mintzberg's managerial roles, Henry Mintzberg looked at what managers actually spend their day doing rather than thinking about the role of a manager in a theoretical way. And this led him to develop his 10 management roles. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.